Good evening. We're back on the record. The time is 7.59. Mr. Fess, you can go ahead and continue. All right. Thank you, Senator. Um, mm -hmm. August Fest again, and this is for Bills 326, 327, and 328-34. I find Bill 326-34 rel relative to granting a citizen, sitting governor the power of a magic wand for dealing with fixing problems with a very problematic medical cannabis bureaucracy a, a, as a very useful concept. I do feel that limiting the coverage to only laboratories and dispensers and limiting only to waivers does not do justice to the concept, nor goes far enough to solving all the problems with medical-only cannabis bureaucracy and all the ill-conceived rules and provisions. Why limit this bill and power to only laboratories and dispensaries? Why only waivers? Why not expand the coverage to the Department of Health doctors, patients, cultivators, manufacturers, why not cover all the bases? A waiver would be considered a quasi-amendment, why stop at waivers? This could fix problems with the high fees, seed to sale tracking system, reciprocity for doctor recommendations and patients, off-island lab testing through the Department of, ha the Department of Health, or bypassing lab testing until a resolution can be accomplished expensive costs and problems with third-party lab certifications in any and all problems that currently exist or will be uncovered. An involved legislative body or so-called commission could accomplish all that is needed, but here we are, and I thank Senator Rodriguez for seeking solutions to the complex problems with a medical-only cannabis bureaucracy. Please consider the expansion of the recovery with this bill 326-34. Bill 327-34, eliminating the requirement of 51% local ownership of a lab could be useful, but not as useful as the Department of Health sending the samples off island at $160 per test sample. I sent the health committee chair the information regarding the Department of Health being exempt from the Department of Regis, uh, the, the, uh, the DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency. They're exempt from registration. And Public Law 33-220, allowing the Department of Health to test or have tests conducted or performed. That's in that same subject, subsection 122504. Any, uh, any progress in further investigating this avenue of procedure? Have you checked it out at all? Yes, you have. No, you haven't. Not going to commit to anything. Poker face. Okay. I also sent the information to Department of Health Acting Director Casil. No word from him. Bill 328-34, GEDA, RFY. I find no issues in exploring any and all opportunities for Guam though I do not foresee a great response of interested parties. Until also under the Controlled Substances Act, cannabis is descheduled or rescheduled or jurisdictions are free to regulate and or conduct studies with cannabis. This is not a viable option, but hopefully as, many, as the many cannabis bills are stacking up in Washington, D.C. and many more states, and the CMI just passed adult use cannabis, uh, cannabis. The levy will soon give way. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Ms. Megan? Hello. My name is Megan Macalonis Hernandez. Um, I'm here in support of medical marijuana and recreational marijuana, and I I didn't get a chance to read the bills. I just found out about this public hearing um, last minute, but I wanted to come and show my support that you're even talking about this because um, I'm not from this island. I moved here in 2015, and one of the first things I looked up was um, what your marijuana, marijuana laws were, and I saw that medical marijuana had passed, which 
um, I was really happy about because my husband uses it. He uses medical marijuana um, because he's a veteran uh, with PTSD from uh, being in the Marines in Iraq, and it really helps him a lot to have it. So I was thankful to see that it was legal, and then we arrived, and I found out, um, well, actually, it's not here and not established. Um, so I attended the first public hearing that I heard about that summer, 2015, um, over in Manilao, and then a second public hearing last year for medical marijuana. So this is my third one. Still saying the same thing, that um, it definitely should be happening, and the sooner the better. Um, I liked what um, the men that were sitting up here said. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me, the patient, the medical marijuana patient that was sitting here, uh, he said something about how he didn't want his daughter to grow it in the house and how he didn't want the, the negative um, attraction, I think he said. And, you know, that is something that can change. That's part of the culture that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be negative to grow marijuana plants in your home or around your home. Um, there are many states that are changing their laws and there are many places where you can grow marijuana legally and the whole mindset is changing there. And there's a lot of people from generations where they thought marijuana was a bad drug and they were always told not to do it. Um, but then they try it on their own and they figure out it is medicinal for them as well and their mindset is changing and that can happen on Guam too. So I don't feel like there should be fear behind allowing people to grow it in their home because this is a plant we're talking about and this plant has had handcuffs on it for many, many years now. Um, but I definitely think it's time to take those off and just see it as a plant, a medicinal plant for what it is. Um, I really like the idea of recreational adult use marijuana. Um, anyone over the age of 21, like you see California, Nevada, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, Maine, Massachusetts, Washington, D.C. There's a lot of places that are headed that direction, and I think Guam can do that too. So. I checked Mark that I was for the bill for the home cultivation. I didn't read the bill. I was just really excited that we're talking about it. <laughs> um, but I like what the man who's running for senator said um, that it, it would be a good thing to legalize it across the board and it could help bring more money to the government of Guam too, especially if we get tourism coming in for recreational or adult use marijuana. So I definitely think that should be thought about. I appreciate these bills being written for the home cultivation and laboratories, but I think it's important to look at the big picture and, and you can go much farther and you don't have to be afraid. And on that topic of fear, this house would be packed. This building will be packed with people if they weren't afraid to talk about this. But people are afraid who will see them, their family member, their employer. Um, I'm not from here, so I don't have all those connections like a lot of people I know do. And I talk to people who I know would be here and support of this, and they're, every single one is afraid to come. So there is a lot more support than you're seeing in this room. And I just want you to remember that when you write bills and think about things like that, that there is a lot of support for marijuana on this island and for good reason, not, not, for, not because it's a drug, you know, because it's actually useful. It's a very useful plant. So keep that in your mind when you think and talk to each other about this kind of stuff. Um, I heard uh, the last man that, spoke, talk about the amount of plants. Um, and the last time I went to a public hearing, I also mentioned that I'm in support of more plants. Um, you can learn a lot about growing marijuana just by watching YouTube videos. So um, if you have questions about what it takes to grow 
and to supply yourself, you can go on YouTube and, and look at what some of these people do. You can find anything from like small home, you know, gardens to, to big scale gardens. Um, but six plants, um, you know, this man also talked about you don't know if it's a male or female plant until it gets about this size already. So you have to look, there's little things that you see on the plant that tell you if it's a male or female, and it has to be old enough for you to know for sure what that plant will be. And like he said, only the females count for medicine. So you have to discard those other plants. So if you have six plants, you might not have one female. And then you got to start all over from seed again. And then it's, you know, you just don't know. So six is definitely not enough. So beyond that, then you, you have various stages, life stages, you know. And if you want to continuously be able to harvest, you need, you know, at least one adult full-grown plant at a time to be able to harvest from. So think about all those different life stages of plants as well. So six is definitely not enough. And um, it, it, it will be hard on the law enforcement to be able to regulate different things like that, you know. So if we can just get past this mindset of this plant being a bad thing, this is a plant. God made this plant, okay? This is not man-made. It's put on this earth for a reason, and we shouldn't be afraid to be able to use it. So thank you. I appreciate it. I hope this helps in your decision-making in the future, and thank you for working late tonight. Thank you very much, Megan, yeah. for your testimony. Oh, can I say one more thing? Sure. Thank you for paper cups. <laughs> You're not using plastic cups. I love it. I, I love that. Thank you. Good thank job, you very guys. much. Yeah, thank you. Yes. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll um, turn it over to the sponsor of the one bill. And if there's any questions, maybe Andrea, if you, you want to just come back up. And Jonathan. Should I please? stay? Yes, please. Okay, Claire. okay. okay. Uh, Senator Munoz. Thank you, Megan. Since your mic is still on, uh, maybe I can ask you a couple of questions too. Sure. Uh, first of all, I want to thank your, you for your testimony and, and thank your husband for his service. Um, is he still serving in, in the military? No. He's not? Mm -mm. Okay. So you moved out here from where, if you don't mind me asking? We moved here from Arizona, from Arizona. to here. Yeah. Um, I'm not very familiar, but does Arizona have a uh, legal... Uh, Legal medicinal, medicinal, marijuana, medicinal, oh. medicinal in Arizona. Were Were you able to grow, um, home cultivate in your in your home in Arizona? No, we weren't, and we didn't live there long enough to do it, anyways. Okay, no. and how how is your husband um, getting some treatment now without? The, uh, I the... I rather not talk about okay. that. Okay, <laughs> okay. I just I mean I was just. <laughs> I was just going to ask. But, okay, yeah. yeah, that's fine. You but it's a, plant. Like, it's a plant. It's a plant. Don't feel comfortable saying. <laughs> right. I, you know, and, and I, I completely agree with you because I know, I know a lot of people who've actually come to me personally since I've introduced this bill that, um, that refuse to come and speak publicly about it. See, um, so they're I know, afraid. I know the handcuffs you're talking about. You know, they, there's a stigma that follows this, um, uh, this, this plant. Yeah. That you say um, that we're trying to we're trying to educate the people, and and I, I want to thank um, you know Andrea and her team because uh, they're expanding the minds of people, and I think um, more and more people are warming up to the idea. Um, when Mr. Conception was up here, uh, his testimony to me was very emotional because I knew his son who passed away from cancer, and so that's why um, I felt his pain. And being here five years ago uh, to say the exact same things, and we're still in the exact, exact same right. position. Yeah. I do, I do differ, though, that we're not exactly in the exact same position. I think yeah. we're inching a little bit closer, and, and as, as much as we want to implement just, you know, right away, um, like, like Andrea said, she's sitting next to you, it's, it's a very complex it's very complex it is, yeah. and it's really easy to take piece by piece the bill one you know line by line the original bill that was introduced and break it down and make it make it something so complex that it starts to turn into something negative 
And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the positivity in it. And, and every time people such as yourself and Jonathan and, um, excuse me, and Mr. Conception, who's had firsthand of what this plant, like you say, that God gave us can do, it, it warms people up. Um, and, and it's not that, that 70s and 80s uh, plant that people used to smoke to alter their mindset. Now it's, it's become a health issue, and I think people are starting to warm up to it. So the more you come out to all these public hearings, the better this program has a chance. Um, so I just want to commend you. Thank you so much. Please, you know, thank you for, for paying attention to it because we need people like you to keep talking about it. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I did want to ask Andrea um, that, uh, is there a way, Andrea, that we can identify uh, the, if, if a seed is male or female? It's, it's, not, it's not that accurate. It's Th not that. They're, but they're trying to, but it's not accurate. And then you have the issue with um, clippings. Uh, so Wait, when you say clippings, do you mean like cut off the clones, plant? And, yeah. So okay. they, 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 you would cut from a mother plant. And that can be done? That can be done. Okay. okay. Um, and, and that's the surest way to, to know that you would have a female plant. Okay. Um, but then when you grow from seed, you also have feminized seeds. Uh, that people claim are, are, are only female, but those also have it. There are actually even hermaphrodite plants. That, that was going to be my next question. So if a female plant, um, you can pull seeds off of a female no, plant? No, okay. So okay. it, it works sure. just like biology. Okay. Uh, the males okay. have the seeds yeah. and then the, the, the women get fertilized. I need to learn a little bit more about these things. Uh, Maybe I might go to YouTube tonight and find yeah, out. But. It's, 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 it's basic botany. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's still a plant. It's a living being, it's a living thing. And so, uh, as much as you want to try to build consistency and make it very, you know, system, systematic in the way you grow it, uh, you can only mitigate it because it's a plant. Um, you know, you go to the store, you're not going to find the same two cucumbers or the same two tomatoes. It, it, as much as we want to regulate it in that manner, because that's how pharma, uh, you know, pharmacies would regulate any sort of medicine, it, it's a plant. That's why they take the plant um, terpenes and they turn that into medicine so that it comes in the form of a pill and whatever. So, but they mix up with chemicals. And so there are a lot of people who choose this route because it's whole plant medicine. So I'm definitely open to the idea of amending the amount of, of plants because I do understand too that certain conditions require a little bit more and certain conditions don't. Um, so I'm definitely open to that. Um, the, more, the more I talk to people about the, the home cultivation, the more I learn about how to grow. And I was also told that um, it's, it's much better to grow indoors than it is uh, to grow outdoors um, only because of, uh, I don't know, mold or I, I'm not sure exactly how, um, how that can happen. But there is an indoor-outdoor clause in, in the bill and, and I'm definitely open to, to learning more whether it be healthier for the patient to grow indoors more than outdoors. Um, but I do know that we have a, a safety clause in there that has to be behind a locked gate. Um, so I'm not sure if they choose to, yeah, I guess depending on the light, I, I'm not sure right. how, it is, how it's a It's a light cycle. Are, it works on a light cycle. Light, and okay, so okay. Uh, you have a 12-hour light cycle and 18-hour uh, uh, light cycle. Okay. And so what happens is you trigger the, the, the plant into flowering by the amount of light it gets per day. Okay, And, that and could so be... if you grow outdoors, that could be, uh, you're talking about an eight, nine-month uh, possibly uh, cycle. Yeah, okay. where if you grow indoor, you could manipulate the, the, the life cycle of the plant. To shorter time. To shorten it, yes. Okay, okay. And, and does the amount of uh, um, uh, the, the plants, I mean, is there like a certain ratio that, that you, can, you can adjust? In, in? Well, there, there, there's a few things to consider. Um, if you're trying to keep an uninterrupted supply of medicine, you're going to want to have mother plants. Uh, a mother plant on this this uh, bill would be considered an, a vegetative plant or an immature plant. Um, if you would make clones out of it, 
um, those would also be considered vegetative plants or immature plants. Until it, you hit the life cycle of flowering, um, then that would be a mature plant. But I, I, one, I think we need definitions for those in the bill. Mm -hmm. If you're going to define it that way, okay. it needs to be clear uh, what exactly you're, you're referring to. Um, and, and so if you're going to carry two kinds of medicine, um, you're going to want to keep two mother plants. And that will ensure that you're growing all females or you're growing the exact type of medicine that you want. That's how you can create some consistency as opposed to planting seeds. Do you, do you know how many weeks it, or, I don't know, maybe weeks, days, how, how long does it take to take, uh, go from seed to when you can find out if it's a female or male? It, it depends on the, the type. It, it depends on the type and it also depends on the, the grower. Okay. Yeah, but if, you, if you're going to average it out, a full life cycle of the, the plant from uh, clone to harvest could be three to five months. Okay. So we usually just go with a flat number four, but it really depends on the type. Uh, you know, the d different uh, breeds uh, or strains of plant require different growing cycles. Well, there is a protection clause in this bill, too, for, for them to allow to be taught how to grow. But uh, as Megan said, that, you know, someone can just go onto YouTube and find out actually how to grow it. So, I mean, would those be a credible source to go to YouTube and learn how to grow? You'd have to medicinal? mitigate. You'd have to mm -hmm. mitigate what's junk and what's good, okay. um, which we've done, a, you know, okay. we've had to do. We have, we've had to figure out who are credible sources, who are not credible sources. Uh, but providing the education is important. That's why in my testimony I said there should be, that's why this is supposed to go hand in hand with, with legal cannabis businesses because a cultivation site or a dispensary could provide these types of services for patients who want to grow at home. Right. They could provide the clones. They could provide the, the mother plants. They could sell those to the patients and provide them with training materials and the proper equipment to grow safely uh, at, home. at home. And, and, and so it, that's my concern. I'm in full support of home conservation. I really am. I, I, I think we need it. Um, I think it should be a part. There are, you know, mainly people who are going to require lots of medicine. And those are usually termini terminally ill patients, mainly cancer patients. Those are the people that really need home cultivation, because right now, if you're looking at the current market prices, a pound of, of cannabis could be anywhere to 10, 10 to 12,000, mm -hmm. and that would make only um, like a two to three month supply for a cancer patient. No, who's got that kind right. of money? I mean, it already costs so much to, to get all the treatments that you need, aside right. from just the therapy of right. making that treatment work right. for you. So yeah, I understand that, that we do need that. Yeah. Uh, that provision. Now, um, I have a question for, um, or not really a question for Jonathan, but uh, so in the bill, uh, there, there's no s specific saying who should be your caregiver um, or who should be the one to allow to grow it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a caregiver. Um, you say your wife is a caregiver, um, but you can always uh, designate someone to be certified to grow for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be your wife, too. So I, I just wanted I, to. That was that was the concern that I had because in the definition of caregiver as in the first bill, and I figured that's where you, you, got, you, get, you got the definition of caregiver from the, first, the previous bills that, that have been passed or the previous legislation. So going off that, that definition, if my caregiver, because that's who I, I would like to designate as my caregiver, my spouse, it, then I, that would mean that we would have to create a, a different, uh, another definition for somebody okay. to to specifically deal with cultivation, that okay. was the concern that I that probably one of the biggest concerns I have, I, I it's just be it, it, and a lot of it is just because of where I stay. Mm -hmm. I, I live in a, in a in an area where I I don't want to grow. I I just I don't want to get into that right. that kind of stuff. There's, there's I, I'm sure everybody has their own individual reasons mm -hmm. why they don't want to grow within their home. But um, I do understand your concerns about having, you know, your wife just designated as the sole caregiver. But I think within this bill, we can incorporate another definition well, of caregiver where you can actually designate someone else to grow it for you, even though your wife is still you considered know, your caregiver. Food for thought. We talk about these cultivators being ready, I, you know, like coming up, and we could empower these, get these cultivators ready, w and, and empower them for this for mm -hmm. this project. 
that you know we've had call, people come up and say that hey I would like to do this and or I would like to get involved and if we can it's just at least to get the ball rolling and that would mean that as soon as the rest of the things fell in place these cultivators who have shown interest into the program that they they want to be uh, cultivators for the for the whole program in itself we could empower them and, and start looking into that as an option I, it's just food for thought right thank you thank you so much and S ahead. senator Mooney in the in the statute a uh, patient can only designate one caregiver one. and a caregiver can only have five patients otherwise it would be considered a business oh. yeah okay a, a caregiver can have five up to five patients right okay okay but doesn't necessarily have to have only one patient right? no a caregiver can have up to five patients to five. so a okay. caregiver can 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 grow for five people uh, but a patient can only have one caregiver they okay. can only designate based one. on the definition of the Correct. original law. In, the, in the statute okay yeah. okay thank you thank you for, for that yeah thank you very much senator senator Steves. thank you mr. chairman um, thank you everyone for your your testimony um, I know there's been a lot of discussion about adult use cannabis and it's been going around a lot and I just I want to make sure my information is up to date um, back when I was I was researching it uh, would any anyone on the panel be able to tell me were any of these adult cannabis um, programs or policies instituted by the states were any of them were they weren't were they all done through a referendum or were any done through the legislative process that's a good question almost none of them were I, I, I want to say that there may be one state on the verge uh, the CNMI would be uh, breaking ground what well, I would say state uh, specifically I want to say there was one state that that's in the process uh, it might be an East Coast state um, I don't know how far in the process they are as far as not it not going to uh, through a ballot Thank you. And back when I did my research, I think it was about December of uh, 2017 up until January of of this year. Um, you know, that's what I had confirmed at the time was all of the states that had an adult use program were all done through legislative referendum. And I think one one important thing, I only want to bring this up to highlight, you know, because you guys have been advocates and I myself am a believer, um, I think you guys are in a position to actually move this that initiative forward faster than us and that's because um, most people don't understand that our relationship with the United States as opposed to a state where we're really a ward of Congress and so we're very limited in what we can do and one of the things explicitly stated in the Organic Act is anything counter to federal law is, is automatically null and void though I think though what the states have done with similar provisions within their own constitutions have gone through the referendum approach because that is not an act of the legislature in defiance to federal law that is just a law that became law through the organic act ratified I mean through the uh, referendum process and ratified through that process completely bypassing the le legislature um, and so I think it's important to note that and, and looking at what the other states did because, again, like I said, I support your advocacy. And I think you guys are able to move mountains a lot faster than we are with regards with regard to that. And I think from a legal standpoint, although I'm, I admit I'm not an attorney, and from what I can see based on, on challenges and similar cases that I've, I've read in my own research, and again, to, to qualify with that with I'm not an attorney, um, I have seen a, a common thread that I think for us to pass such legislation in this body again would be in direct contrast to federal law and it's explicitly stated within the Constitution or within our organic act however I think there would be better arguments available if it's done as a prerogative of the constituency and the population because it, I don't see that based on, on my reading of the Organic Act as being in contrast because it hasn't been passed by the legislature. Um, so, you know, again, I want to keep encouraging you guys for your advocacy and, and, and keep moving the initiatives forward because I think what's been very clear tonight is you are all very knowledgeable. Um, and, and again, community empowerment is, is and, and what we've seen with the uh, adult use, I'm sorry, medicinal use, the um, Casey Conception Act, of what the community is able to do when they put their minds to it. 
And, you know, truthfully, as you can see, as slow as government is, we're doing our very best to catch up. But in terms of moving initiatives forward, I just want to keep encouraging you. Yes. The, this was something that I, that I actually got guidance on because I did think about just picking up a packet to, to, to push it forward. The problem is if it fell, they, I, I was told, I, I remember I was talking to Andrea about this, that I would have had to wait another 10 years. And, I, and to do that right now, I didn't, want, I didn't feel I, that I was in a position to, 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 to pick that up and roll the dice and, and, and chance that, that, that lapse for 10 years to, to just try to, move, to, to run for, the, to, to put up that recre, uh, the recreational or the adult use program up. I, I just, I, it has, I, I did look into it. I just, when I found out the 10 year statute, I wanted to make sure that all the, before even introducing something of that nature, all the ducks were in a row before, and, and we made sure that we were as ed educated as possible. I'm as educated as possible before uh, pursuing something like that. No, absolutely, you, you are correct. But again, you know, I just want to highlight. I think you, as community ag activists, um, an activist in, in some respect, um, I think you pushing forward what your desires as uh, members of this community again is commendable. And so I, I just wanted to remind you that there are avenues, albeit there are some risk involved. And, you know, the 10 year statute is a local statute, which could also be looked at again, um, all things considered, um, all things being equal moving forward. Uh, but I just want to highlight that because it has been brought up a lot, but uh, just some food for thought as uh, we end tonight. And uh, thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Steves and Senator Munia. Senator Steves, you did say that the individuals that, that come forward are very knowledgeable. I want to thank them. Uh, the committee has, um, has really taken advantage of the information that Andrea and Grassroots um, Guam provides. John, as well, has been very helpful in providing us um, information. And so um, these bills that we have will, will ensure that, um, th well, that's my commitment, will ensure we move it out of the committee and get it um, entertained in our next session, which is, I think, I believe, for the end of the month. So we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we do that. We work with the author and see what changes need to be made. Okay? Great. Again, thank you very much. I want to thank you for staying this, this late. Thank the staff as well for, for being here. And so the time now is 8.31, and this public hearing is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>